Chapter 9, The Supreme Character of Judd Bharat. Srila Shukdev Goswami continued, My dear king, after giving up the body of a deer, Bharat Maharaj took birth in a very pure Brahmin family. There was a Brahmin who belonged to the dynasty of Angida. He was fully qualified with Brahminical qualifications. He could control his mind and senses, and he had studied the Vedic literatures and other subsidiary literatures. He was expert in giving charity, and he was always satisfied, tolerant, very gentle, learned, and non-envious. He was self-realized and engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. He remained always in a trance. He had nine equally qualified sons by his first wife, and by his second wife he begot twins, a brother and a sister, of which the male child was said to be the topmost devotee and foremost of saintly kings, Bharat Maharaj. This then is the story of the birth he took after giving up the body of a deer. Due to his being especially gifted with the Lord's mercy, Bharat Maharaj could remember the incidents of his past life. Although he received the body of a Brahmin, he was still very much afraid of his relatives and friends who were not devotees. He was always very cautious of such association because he feared that he would again fall down. Consequently, he manifested himself before the public eye as a madman, dull, blind, and deaf, so that others would not try to talk to him. In this way, he saved himself from bad association. Within, he was always thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord and chanting the Lord's glories, which save one from the bondage of fruitive action. In this way, he saved himself from the onslaught of non-devotee associates. The Brahmin father's mind was always filled with affection for his son, Jad Bharat, or Bharat Maharaj. Therefore, he was always attached to Jad Bharat. Because Jad Bharat was unfit to enter the Grahasta ashram, he simply executed the purificatory process up to the end of the Brahmacharya ashram. Although Jad Bharat was unwilling to accept his father's instructions, the Brahmin nonetheless instructed him in how to keep clean and how to wash, thinking that the son should be taught by the father. Jad Bharat behaved before his father like a fool despite his father's adequately instructing him in Vedic knowledge. He behaved in that way so that his father would know that he was unfit for instruction and would abandon the attempt to instruct him further. He would behave in a completely opposite way. Although instructed to wash his hands after evacuating, he would wash them before. Nonetheless, his father wanted to give him Vedic instructions during the spring and summer. He tried to teach him the Gayatri Mantra along with Omkar and Vyarati. But after four months, his father still was not successful in instructing him. The Brahmin father of Jad Bharat 
considered his son his heart and soul, and therefore he was very much attached to him. He thought it wise to educate his son properly, and being absorbed in this unsuccessful endeavor, he tried to teach his son the rules and regulations of brahmacharya, including the execution of the Vedic vows, cleanliness, study of the Vedas, the regulative methods, service to the spiritual master, and the method of offering a fire sacrifice. He tried his best to teach his son in this way, but all his endeavors failed. In his heart, he hoped that his son would be a learned scholar, but all his attempts were unsuccessful. Like everyone, this Brahmin was attached to his home, and he had forgotten that some day he would die. Death, however, was not forgetful. At the proper time, death appeared and took him away. Thereafter, the Brahmin's younger wife, after entrusting her twin children, the boy and girl, to the elder wife, departed for Patiloka, voluntarily dying with her husband. After the father died, the nine stepbrothers of Jadbhadat, who considered Jadbhadat dull and brainless, abandoned the father's attempt to give Jadbhadat a complete education. The stepbrothers of Jadbhadat were learned in the three Vedas, the Rig Veda, Sam Veda, and Yajur Veda, which very much encourage fruitive activity. The nine brothers were not at all spiritually enlightened in devotional service to the Lord. Consequently, they could not understand the highly exalted position of Jadbhadat. Degraded men are actually no better than animals. The only difference is that animals have four legs and such men have only two. These two-legged animalistic men used to call Jadbhadat mad, dull, deaf, and dumb. They mistreated him and Jadbhadat behaved for them like a madman who is deaf, blind, or dull. He did not protest or try to convince them that he was not so. If others wanted him to do something, he acted according to their desires. Whatever food he could acquire by begging or by wages, and whatever came of its own accord, be it a small quantity, palatable, stale, or tasteless, he would accept and eat. He never ate anything for sense gratification because he was already liberated from the bodily conception, which induces one to accept palatable or unpalatable food. He was full in the transcendental consciousness of devotional service, and therefore he was unaffected by the dualities arising from the bodily conception. Actually, his body was as strong as a bull's, and his limbs were very muscular. He didn't care for winter or summer, wind or rain, and he never covered his body at any time. He lay on the ground and never smeared oil on his body or took a bath. Because his body was dirty, his spiritual effulgence and knowledge were covered, just as the splendor of a valuable gem is covered by dirt. He only wore a dirty loincloth and his sacred thread, which was blackish. Understanding that he was born in a Brahmin family, people would call him a Brahma Bandhu and other names. Being thus insulted and neglected by materialistic people, he wandered here and there. Jat Bharat used to work only for food. His stepbrothers took advantage of this and engaged him in agricultural fieldwork in exchange for some food but actually he did not know how to work very well in the field. He did not know where to spread dirt or where to make the ground level or uneven. His brothers used to give him broken rice, oil cakes, the chaff of rice, worm-eaten grains, and burned grains that had stuck to the pot. But he gladly accepted all this as if it were nectar. He did not hold any grudges and ate all this very gladly.
At this time, being desirous of obtaining a son, a leader of Dacoits, who came from a Shudra family, wanted to worship the goddess Bhadra Kali by offering her in sacrifice a dull man who was considered no better than an animal. The leader of the Dacoits captured a man-animal for sacrifice, but he escaped and the leader ordered his followers to find him. They ran in different directions but could not find him. Wandering here and there in the middle of the night, covered by dense darkness, they came to a paddy field where they saw the exalted son of the Angira family, namely Judd Bharat, who was sitting in an elevated place, guarding the field against the attacks of deer and wild pigs. The followers and servants of the Dacoit chief considered Judd Bharat to possess qualities quite suitable for a man-animal, and they decided that he was a perfect choice for sacrifice. Their faces bright with happiness, they bound him with ropes and brought him to the temple of Goddess Kali. After this, all the thieves, according to their imaginative ritual for killing animalistic men, bathed Judd Bharat, dressed him in new clothes, decorated him with ornaments befitting an animal, smeared his body with scented oils, and decorated him with tilak, sandalwood pulp, and garlands. They fed him sumptuously and then brought him before the goddess Kali, offering her incense, lamps, garlands, parched grain, newly grown twigs, sprouts, fruits, and flowers. In this way they worshipped the deity before killing the man-animal, and they vibrated songs and prayers and played drums and bugles. Judd Bharat was then made to sit down before the deity. At this time, one of the thieves, acting as the chief priest, was ready to offer the blood of Judd Bharat, whom they imagined to be an animal man, to the goddess Kali to drink as a liquor. He therefore took up a very fearsome sword, which was very sharp, and, consecrating it by the mantra of Bhadra Kali, raised it to kill Judd Bharat. All the rogues and thieves who had made arrangements for the worship of goddess Kali were low-minded and bound to the modes of passion and ignorance. They were overpowered by the desire to become very rich. Therefore, they had the audacity to disobey the injunctions of the Vedas, so much so that they were prepared to kill Judd Bharat, a self-realized soul born in a Brahmin family. Due to their envy, these dacoits brought him before the goddess Kali for sacrifice. Such people are always addicted to envious activities, and therefore they dared to try to kill Judd Bharat. Judd Bharat was the best friend of all living entities. He was no one's enemy, and he was always absorbed in meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He was born of a good Brahmin father, and killing him was forbidden, even though he might have been an enemy or aggressive person. In any case, there was no reason to kill Judd Bharat, and the goddess Kali could not bear this. She could immediately understand that these sinful dacoits were about to kill a great devotee of the Lord. Suddenly the deity's body burst asunder, and the goddess Kali personally emerged from it in a body burning with an intense and intolerable effulgence. Intolerant of the offenses committed, the infuriated goddess Kali flashed her eyes and displayed her fierce, curved teeth. Her reddish eyes glowed, and she displayed her fearsome features. She assumed a frightening body, as if she were prepared to destroy the entire creation. Leaping violently from the altar, she immediately decapitated all the rogues and thieves with the very sword with which they had intended to kill Judd Bharat. She then began to drink the hot blood that flowed from the necks of the beheaded rogues and thieves, as if this blood were liquor.
<laughs> Indeed, she drank this intoxicant with her associates, who were witches and female demons. <laughs> Becoming intoxicated with this blood, they all began to sing very loudly and dance as though prepared to annihilate the entire universe. <laughs> At the same time, they began to play with the heads of the rogues and thieves, tossing them about as if they were balls. <laughs> when an envious person commits an offense before a great personality, he is always punished in the way just mentioned. O Vishnu Datta, those who already know that the soul is separate from the body who are liberated from the invincible knot in the heart, who are always engaged in welfare activities for all living entities, and who never contemplate harming anyone, are always protected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who carries his disc, the Sudarshan Chakra, and acts as supreme time to kill the demons and protect his devotees. The devotees always take shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord, Therefore, at all times, even if threatened by decapitation, they remain unagitated. For them, this is not at all wonderful. Thus ends the ninth chapter of the fifth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Supreme Character of Jad Bharat.